Hi, welcome. Welcome to Auckland. We're here at my house where we do these videos every week now for the foreign and domestic. It's a hell of a good time and I really appreciate you guys joining in. Um, especially those of you that keep coming back for more and those of you that are new, welcome aboard. It's a, it's a great time. Let's go over what we do all the time. We always go over first through your kit to make sure that you got everything and you feel nice and secured about what you have in front of you. This over here is your salad kit. Inside of the salad kit, there's going to be cabbage, watercress mainly, some spinach, some Thai basil, which is delicious, and some mint as well, with a little bit of carrots. There are going to be some almonds. There's going to be your honey soy dressing. There's some of you that are allergic to soy. I took care of you. I put it to the side for you. And then this is it for the salad. We chose to focus more in the other techniques that you're learning, okay? This dressing is super easy, and once you see the recipe, you see why I didn't do a demo for you. It's literally dump everything in a bowl, whisk it together, and that's it. There's no emotion. There's nothing. So it's quite simple. Um, in your entree side, you're going to have a bag with the bok choy and the three local eggplants from the cool folks of Ever Oak. They still have some left over. And then you're going to have your braising kit, which there's fennel, shallots, thyme, beautiful stuff. Your pork belly. Your five spice kit. In this five spice kit, you're going to have cinnamon, coriander, black pepper, star anise, and clove. That's all going to be braised together with white wine in your stock. Okay. With that, towards the end of the process, you're going to have your glazing, which you're going to see like little chunks of pepper in it. There's a red scent to it. And that's where you glaze your pork belly with at the way out. Just follow the instructions. It'll be fine. There's a little uh, Asian sofrito, if you will. So we made a, a paste of some beautiful chai flowers, ginger, garlic, shallots, and an itty-bitty of Thai pepper chilies. Not too spicy, just good flavor. And there's some oil here for you, which is canola blended with sesame. Um, for today, you're definitely going to need a wooden spoon, something for you to fish vegetables out of your pot of water that's boiling, okay? Ice water bath, a five to six inch small pan or pot with walls that should be about two inches high. An 8 to 10 inch skillet. And that's it. And a bowl for you to mix your salad. It's a lot of little minute prep for one punch. You wham bam, you're done. So you do a lot in the beginning, and then the, the pickup process is quick, as I say it. Um, obviously, salt, we encourage you to only use kosher from this moment forward for the rest of your life. Use kosher. You melt even, it's better for you. Everything about it's better. It has a better crunch. You can feel it. It's not, it doesn't have the sandy feeling to it. Um, I always, always, always cook with a spoon. Okay? And if, I, if it is a metal spoon, I never touch the bottom of the pan. That's why I'm showing you a, a wooden spoon for that. And my chef knife. That's what I always cook with. So these items you're going to need today. We're going to go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get your oven to 355 degrees Fahrenheit right away. Okay, cool. So now we're going to start cooking your pork. All right. So for that, the exact exercise you're going to need, obviously, your pork belly. I just let it temper for about 10 minutes outside. What does temper mean? You pull out of the fridge. You put it on a plate. You let it sit on room temperature for a little bit. That's going to reassure that your meat is one more step that you're taking so your meat doesn't go dry on you as you cook, okay? You're also going to need some salt. You're going to need your oil that I'm going to provide you, your five-spice kit, your white wine, and your stock. All of this for the braising of the pork together with your vegetables, okay? But you're going to go over those right away. Let me move this stuff out of your way here so you can see it. And we're going to talk also about our tools Wooden spoon, I always cook with my spoon. I repeat myself all the time with that. A nice sharp knife, dry rags, so you can put stuff in and out of the oven, okay? A clean cutting board, 
and of course your pan and your stove. I'm putting over here on a little burner so we can see better. You can visualize it better. This is about six, five inches saute pan. But the thing for you to really pay attention to is not just the radius, but the depth of it. This is a really good depth. It's about two inches deep, mainly. So when you put the amount of liquid, the amount of vegetables in your pork, you have a right height on it. If this is the right of the height of the pork, you want your liquid, once you put the liquid with everything else, right in here, okay? Don't visualize it as a pan, but just a rule of thumb. In other words, if this is the vessel you're going to cook the pork in, put about yay much on the pork or the liquid, okay? Let's get this going. I'm going to get my... My temperature over here nice and high okay or better yet, a medium high if you will so medium high in your saute pan and once you achieve that you're going to get a thin film of this chef you always say thin film why you're trying to avoid your food being greasy so it's just enough so your vegetables get it the right amount for color for cooking so on and so forth cool all right so Let's go, oh, man. There's light over here now. Jesus. It's nice and hot. Put a little bit of your oil. Okay. Look, check it out. Just a thin film. All right. It's just a thin film of it. Just a little bit. And you're going to start smelling a little bit of sesame. I put like a dollop, not even joking, a dollop of the sesame here. Okay. You're going to start pulling your vegetables out. All right. So you're gonna put your fennel. Those of you that don't like fennel, and there's one of you that I know that doesn't like fennel. I'm not gonna name names. But uh, this is mainly for the cooking. You're not really gonna taste it, okay? You're gonna put all your fennel there. And as it's roasting, you're going to get your shallots. And you're gonna get rough cuts on your shallots. In other words, you're just gonna cut them roughly, all right? You don't have to really Pay attention. No rhyme or reason on this one. Just make sure that your shallots are about the same size. Put them in there. Okay. So a lot of times shallots are very much, um, how can I put it, used for a garlic and an onion-like taste, flavor, skill. So we're doing exactly that. Okay. And then you're going to put your bunch of time to the side and you're gonna put your ginger here as this is roasting and it's gonna roast just a little bit not a lot okay as this is roasting you're going to get your pork belly and I'm gonna need you to come over here please put a little seasoning on this on your vegetables okay as this is roasting, you are going to put your cutting board, your, your pork on your cutting board. You're going to curve your belly like this. You see that? And you're going to start making those, those little cuts on the skin. All right. One, one direction, one on the other. Chef, why do you do that? That assures an even cooking and the fat is going to melt through this little slot. See the slots over here, guys? You see that? The fat's gonna melt through that and almost self-based the pork. I'm putting it right here. Keep looking at the pork because I'm gonna wash my hands. Don't let it go anywhere. I get a lot of slack from saying these things, let me say. So we're gonna go over here now towards the saute pan. You see that I'm out of color right there? You see that? You see how there's a little bit of a uh, of coloration in there. Chef, how come you're doing Asian food and don't have a wok? Well, friends, it's because I don't have a wok burner. A wok burner would, hu would hug the whole circumference, of oh, sorry, radius of the pan, all of it. This is not it. At this point, I'm going to put my spices in there and this Chinese five spice. So we have coriander, 
coriander, black pepper, star anise, and cloves. And coriander, black pepper, star anise, cloves, and cinnamon. There it is. Sorry. So as is roasting over there, we are going to put our thyme. Okay. And if you look, I am really using Asian flavors, but more than anything else, I'm using French technique because that's what I grew up with. Um, and it's not that it's more right or wrong, it's, it's extraction of flavors, and I'm choosing to go this way so it's easier for you guys with the pans that you have at the house. Okay? And now we're going to crank the heat of the, uh, of the pan. Now... As you, um, as you can see now, I'm going to start seasoning the pork. And I'm going to really get in there, okay? So, and I want to kind of open up those little slabs to get it, okay? On the top and on the bottom, all right? And skin side down. You're gonna go there and you're gonna kind of give it a slight press. This is not Denny's hamburger at three o'clock in the morning after you went out drinking. You're gonna go nice and slow, okay? You just wanna have some sort of presence of the skin of the pork in there. Okay, so as you can see, my pork is still over there. It probably seared for about, let's say three minutes or medium high. So I'm lowering it now because now I am going to flip it, get a quick sear on the bottom. And we're doing this searing because that searing assures us is another step that we're doing for retention of liquid of the meat. So it's almost, we call this the sealing of it, not just the searing, but the sealing of it. So as you sear every side of it, you kind of seal in all those juices, okay? So for, that, for this time, I'm going to need to have my chicken stock available and my white wine available okay so I'm getting a good a good little sear there you can see that I can ba I barely had any color there and that's fine that's all I wanted but another thing too that I want to make sure that I tell you guys you don't want to cover the skin because if you cover the skin you are going to what kill your chances of getting the skin crispy of some sort of resemblance of crispness resemblance of Christmas, I should say. Okay, so right now, as a reminder, your oven is at 355, ready to go. Number one. Number two, your stove, what is cooking this right now, is at medium to almost medium high on the temperature, searing the bottom of it. So right now, I have a decent sear on it. Let me show you. Where are my manners? See that? Can you see that? So there's a little bit of color there on the bottom of the pork. Cool. Here we go. There's a white wine. And you rattle just a little bit. And you'll be glazing all those beautiful flavors there. Extracting some of the flavors on the bottom of the pan into your vegetables and all that and without we reducing all the way I'm gonna add all of my stock and as I add my stock I'm going to wait for it to bubble again when it bubbles guys guess what you get to do you get to put it in the oven super 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 simple and you're not gonna put in the oven with a cover on it you're not gonna put in the oven foil on it nothing you're just gonna put in the oven and you're gonna count about Two hours and 15 to two hours and 30 minutes. That's how long it takes. So after this little process over here that you could tell it took me nothing, we're going to put it in the oven at 355 degrees for two, two hours and 15 minutes, two hours and 30 minutes. Cool? We'll check back in a second. All right, cool. We're back. So we're going to get right to your vegetable prep, okay? As you can tell. A pork in, is in the oven at 355 degrees, and it's going to go there for two and a half hours. Two, two hours and 15, two and a half hours. Just keep an eye on the amount of liquid. If you feel like it needs a little more liquid, add a little bit of water. Chef, how do I know it's going to need a little more liquid? If you see getting down to a syrup, you want to put a little bit of water. 
Cool. Let's do it. Go ahead and get your A to 10 inch skillet. I'm going to open up right here my vegetable. The bok choy is going, going to be a little later. Let's go ahead and take care of these eggplants. Why did I choose these eggplants? Very simple. Number one, they're in season, they're local. Okay. Chef, I love the Japanese eggplants, the ones that are they're long. They're fantastic. These are really cool. They're actually called Indian eggplant. Indian in the Asian continent, guys. Relax. So what I like to do, I like to take the top off just a little bit and do it by half. I'm going to go ahead and get the camera over here for you to see it a little better. So fear not. Okay. So here we go. We're going to go, we're going to get these guys right on my cutting board there. And we're going to take the top off. And then we're going to go down the center here. Boom. See that? The other stuff. Again, the other one. Again. So we have all three here. Each of you, each one of your cool kids, each one of your cool kids is going to get three little halves. And believe me, it's plenty. It's rich. I want you to focus here again. Let's check this out. I want you to see to do something. The same move that we did with the pork, we're going to do with this. And those of you that were here last weekend with the zucchini, we did it again. We're going to do a little scoring that really assures an even cooking. So it's going to go diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. Be careful. Don't cut yourself, guys. Diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. Form those little diamonds. Chef, is it because it's cool? No. That provides an even cooking of the vegetable or of anything that you're cooking that gets the heat in there seems trivial i know but you know what it's not so we're gonna go and make sure that we are ready for you here by taking care of these vegetables okay and everything is nice and scored, ready for you. Cool. Now the camera is going to start pointing over here because we're going to go onto our skillet and we're going to cook this. Cook this right into the skillet. Okay. So the skillet is going to go at a medium to high heat and I have my oil right here this is it okay so don't be too worried because this part is probably the easiest part of the whole shebang super cake we're gonna get the pan nice and hot chef you're crazy touch the pan I have, my hands are done I can't even feel much anymore okay so this over here, this oil is a blend of canola and sesame. So there's a high smoking point. What does smoking point mean? It means simply that it takes longer, higher smoking points take, takes longer to burn the oil than usual oil. So I'm going to go ahead and season these guys here with salt and put in skin side down, I'm sorry, flesh side down, right there, and we're going to do an oven roast of this eggplant, in French, because of the, uh, the amount of oil and how long it takes and all that, it's almost like the confit too, or, or a confit of this, okay, it's not, doesn't necessarily need to involve only, um, duck fat to be a confit. It's length of time and oil for preservation. So it is at a medium to high heat on a little bit of oil and it's going to roast here for a bit. Probably about, I want to say five to six minutes. So we're going to start cutting this up and make sure that you have the correct time at the bottom of your screen. All right, we're back. So 
just so you know, it's been cooking flesh side down like it is right there for the last six minutes. I'm going to start turning it and it should have the beautiful brown color that you see right there. Okay. I got a little bit of a spoon going on over here. That's a nice little char. I'm happy with that. That's okay. We're doing good. At this point, I'm going to take advantage of the oven that's already on for the pork for 355. That the pork is already in there and the pork is almost done. And we're going to put that in there, okay? So you're going to stay right there and want to come back. And when I come back, magically, we're going to have a pot of water going for your bok choy. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. So as you can see, I have my bok choy here. And the bok choy is enough for two people. It's, it's hearty. So we're going to go ahead and cut it right down in the center. And we're going to start moving around to the um, pot of water that we have. So as you can tell, we're going to have a flat side here going. So there's a portion for two over here. And we're going to move right over here. And you're going to see your ice water bath and your pot of water boiling. So fear not, okay? Those of you that are new, we do this thing called um, big pot blanching, which we get a, a big pot of water boiling, which is this. And we add quite a bit of salt to make the, so the water tastes almost like the ocean. And that convectional movement of water in there, together the amount of salt in there, is going to keep your green vegetable green. It's going to brighten it up. Before we do any of this, we already have our ice water bath, okay? So the ice water bath is here. My little th something to fish is all this little colander looking spider, as we like to call it. In the professional kids, we call this a spider, but it doesn't have slotted holes. He has little um, wires here, making it look like a spider web. So this is just a slotted spoon if you or skimmer um, so we have lots of salt on this hot water boiling and in it goes and as it stays there it's going to stay there you don't have you don't need the, the lid i'm sorry it's going to stay there for a good 45 seconds because we're just blanching it what does blanching mean we're speeding up the process a little bit and we doing this so it also maintains the beautiful bright green color in its nutrients as well it's not just for cosmetic it's also for health reasons okay so it is going to come out actually let's let's do about 60 seconds and 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and off they go. Yes, they're good. Okay, so they're going to be a little bit al dente. If you focus over here, you can tell that I'm not joking about how full of submerged in ice water it is. And that what that what does that do, Chef? That shocks them, and it stops it from cooking. As you're looking right there, I'm going to pull out. I'm going to show you what the roasted eggplant turned out. So it was about um, six minutes skin side, I mean flat side, and about on the stove top that is, and about eight minutes in the oven with the skin down. Um, perfect, perfect. As you can tell over here, I'm gonna grab one and show you in the camera. As you can tell over here, you see that? There's just enough texture in there. It is absolutely perfect. It's absolutely what I wanted to do. I'm gonna keep them over here on that pan hot, okay? Always, 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 when you pull pans out of the oven, you have yourself a dry rag. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this pan to my stove, and I'm gonna reconnect really quick. All right, we're back. So as you can tell, bok choy is being blanched. We already roasted the eggplant. And we have the pork belly here. Chef, why does your pork belly look so ugly? Because I pick up the ugliest pieces for me. Okay, so you guys have the beautiful stuff. So here you go. We're going to ask you to start come close over here. And you're going to be able to see it, what, a, what a part of our focus was. 
Okay, check it out. Okay, we're gonna set it down, and I want you to look, 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 listen, 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 listen. Crunchy, crunchy, kids. This is what we're looking for. Beautiful stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and put the belly right here on a little paper towel. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Cool. All right, and then over here on a clean bowl, we're gonna get some of that liquid in there, okay? Just like this. The chef's a little greasy. It's okay. It's gonna be delicious. So good. Okay, just keep focusing there, kids. Don't worry, Uncle Bruno's got it over here. We're gonna be just fine. I'll hold your hand. We got it right, okay? I'm coming back. And on the same pan, okay, we're gonna cook something on the same pan in a little bit. On the meantime, you're gonna get your beautiful, beautiful stuff here. This is your glaze with a little bit of that juice. And you're gonna put just a little bit. For those of you that don't like heat, fear not, because for me, to like it, and I don't like heat, it's because it's good. So, there is some beautiful spicy over here. We are gonna get, we're gonna move my eggplants over here. We're gonna put my pan over here. Yeah, it has some of the residual from cooking, it's fine. And I'm gonna get the belly like this. And I'm gonna put it on top of it, of this crispy skin here. And then as I'm cooking the rest of the stuff, I'm gonna pop back in the oven for a very brief second. Maybe, maybe five minutes, we're gonna be going back in the oven at 355, not even five minutes. All right, great, so we came to the end. A couple things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a little bit of your salt, you're gonna need your pepper, metal spoon, good measure, wooden spoon as well. You always, always, always we need when you cutting pork belly that has crunchy skin. Get a serrated knife, a breaded knife, okay? Those of you that don't like it, you can get a chef knife, it's fine. I like when I cut my meat, especially the ones that have been braised. Put a little bit of a paper towel action on my cutting board, just old habits, okay? And we are gonna go, the pork belly is resting, has the glaze on it. I pulled it, it literally was in the oven for less than five minutes or just enough to make the glaze hot. That's all I did. Okay, the pork belly is cooked already, so just resting. All right, cool. So. Let's go ahead and I got my, my pan going. I'm gonna ask you to get a little closer to me. My pan is getting nice and hot here. And at this point I have my sesame canola blend and my little paste. You're gonna have the recipe of this paste and your recipe is gonna yield about a cup or so, okay? And that's why I didn't make you, didn't have you do it because it's gonna yield too much and it's probably just gonna rot in your fridge. It's, it's very potent, a little bit goes a very, very long way. So these things are gonna help us cook the stir fry of the bok choy and the, and the, um, of the bok choy and the eggplant, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to focus over here on the pan. The pan is getting hot. Here we go. What we're gonna need the least amount of time in this pan is gonna be the eggplant, so it's gonna go last a thin film of the sesame canola blend. And we're gonna go with your paste over here, okay? This is gonna be strong in flavor with everything else and it's gonna give a lot, a lot of scent going on here. So you can look that you already started to blossom on my pan that's hot. I don't want it to burn. So I am gonna go ahead and put my bok choy here. I'm gonna season my bok choy a little bit. Always high, you always season high. If you season over here, you're only gonna get that area. When you season over here, you get the whole thing, even distribution. Same thing with my black pepper. Okay, you just want to make it hot again and you want to um, give a nice little bit of color, which you are, okay? All right, so I'm only gonna add the eggplant now once I flip this. 
So in a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and get the, um, it's not a little bit, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get my pork belly and I am going to need you to focus over here on my board, please, camera person. Sweetheart, you are. And here we go. Boom. He has been resting already. So I'm going to go ahead and slice this up for you as my bok choy is cooking. Crispy, 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 kids. And fully cooked and delicious. Okay. Oops, I got a little bit of ticker there. I'm sorry. My apologies. Okay, so it's significantly sm smaller, my portion to yours, but is really nice. I have the meat, you can tell it's moist. You can tell my skin is super crispy. And we're going to go back here to the bok choy now. And as I flip my bok choy, I'm going to put a little bit more oil. Very little of my ginger garlic paste. I'm going to mix with the oil there because now I'm going to put the eggplant right there. So we left you here and everything is, is going pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick up what I need from the pan, which is gonna be the bok choy. I'm gonna put it right about so. A little bit of my eggplant. Okay. And I'm gonna put my belly. We really have a lot of different textures it's it's the the new movement if you will on a lot of restaurants nowadays due to a lot of scarcity of foods is that the vegetables are the main star of the dish i didn't try to do that to be quite frank with you but flavor wise the vegetables are incredible and the belly really provides a lot of the fat and the beautiful meat in the to it let's go ahead and talk about the beast let's go ahead and talk about the belly Other five spice really goes in it really well. The skin. Super crunchy. Let's call the eggplant. Really nice. In the bok choy, really. It's quite nice light really nice so the bok choy is very spinach like if you will on flavor super light and green the, the eggplant you can really taste why we make this effort of going to a farm and pick and getting the eggplants or pick that day to give it to you they're delicious pork is fantastic well, there you go. Very simple meal. Absolutely delicious. Loads of layers of flavors. I hope you enjoy it like I do because I'm going to have dinner right now. It's fantastic. Thank you so very much. I'll see you next time.